Hi, this is Dave Artozowitz. I'm excited to be here today. I have a very good friend who's with me. His name is Mark Kears. Mark, um, thank you for arriving and, and coming and visiting us. We are going to be sharing some very insightful and very important messages today uh, within Have You Experienced Jesus? Now, Mark, you're a, a pastor, right? Yes, and, I am for man, over 30 years now. 30 years. Wow. wow. And yeah. you um, have a ministry called Truth and Love Ministry, right? Correct. And that's out in the Boise, Idaho yeah, area? Yeah, Boise, Idaho, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you've been a pastor for a number of years, and I, I believe you, you really do know the Word of God, right? Well, I study it all the time, and I was blessed with some good training. So, yes. Okay, where did you get your training? I was a small college in Wisconsin called Northwestern College, and I went to Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary uh, four years there, and uh, what's really neat about that, to get into the seminary, you have to know the biblical languages of Hebrew and Greek, so oh. worked with that all the time. Okay, yeah. great. So you have a really, really, really strong understanding of, of the Word of God, and this is what we're going to actually be talking about today, and so why we are here is we're going to be embracing the very important subject of what is the priesthood. The priesthood of God, mm -hmm. and and I'm excited to have you here because I know you have a um, a very strong understanding of this, and I'm sure there are many people who might be from many different type of churches who are a part of what they call a, a priesthood, and what we we are interested in doing is sharing this with you, so you get a, a really good understanding of what the priesthood means in the Old Testament and how it changed in the New Testament. So since I'm addressing all that, why don't we First of all, talk about what is the priesthood. Well, the priesthood was something that God instituted when he was calling the children of Israel out of Egypt. And, you know, he was organizing the nation. And so he uh, instituted a priesthood there. And, and really, this is where a lot of people already get confused, right, what the purpose of the priesthood was. Okay. And the purpose of the priesthood was to give the people access. They were the people's representative to God. Whereas the prophets, which actually came a little bit later, were God's representatives to the people. So, because God really wanted to teach the people that sin separates God from man. And so he didn't just give them direct access to him. He instituted the priesthood to really get across this message, how serious sin is. I see. Yeah, and, and the priesthood started at, at what period of the time? In the Old Testament, if we're looking at the priesthood, right. what, when did it start and, and who did it start with? Okay, uh... To start at the time of the Exodus, which is about 1445 B.C., time of Moses. Everybody knows Moses. Okay. Know? Time of Moses, and that's where it started. And actually what God did is he selected, he chose Aaron, Moses' brother, older brother actually, his older brother, to be the high priest. And then Aaron's family became the priesthood. And that it was just uh, reserved for that family. So you got the priesthood by hereditary. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. So what was his family? Was it his family, um, I, I believe, what I've understood is they were called Levites, is that correct? Well, the Levites was actually the bigger tribe. Okay. And the family of Aaron was just part of, you know, one clan in that tribe. Okay. And so all the Levites actually worked around the temple and stuff, but not all the Levites were priests. Only Aaron's family were priests. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was just okay. you know the the one slice of the pie of the Levitical uh, tribe. Okay. So then, what you're saying then from Aaron, his family came, and how old did they have to be to obtain the priesthood, and how did they get the priesthood? Well, the, how was it given? It, it was given by hereditary. Okay. So okay. you just was born into it. Uh, it was just the males. Only, only the males had the priesthood, and they actually started to um, become a priest and actually uh, uh, worked as a priest when they were 25 to 30 years old. So, so then from 25 to 30 years old to the rest of their life, they basically were priests. Okay. And, and, and their whole purpose was to be <laughs> their people's representative to God. Oh, okay. And actually, there were two altars in the Old Testament, you know, in the first of all, in the tabernacle, then in the temple. And they really symbolized the, the purpose of the priest. On the outside of the temple was the altar of burnt offering. And see, when people came, like Dave comes and wants to give a sacrifice to God, he couldn't just go up to the altar <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, you're right. and do it. He had to hand it over to the priest, and the priest was the ones who put on the altar. So one of their purposes was to sacrifice for the people. So sometimes what you're saying then is Aaron 
gave the priesthood to the Levitical, I mean, actually down, the descendants of Aaron had the Levitical priesthood. But my understanding also was that the Levitical priests, some of them were involved in sacrificial gifts, what you're saying about the blood. Mm -hmm. But is it also true that the high priests who went into the temple and brought the blood and then sprinkled the blood on the altar, who was that? Was he a higher priest at that point? Right. In fact, well, first of all, he was called the high priest, right? Uh, he, Within the Levitical priest, right? He was a high priest. The temple was divided into two parts. I mean, well, you have to understand separation. So it's like going to church for most of the Israelites was like going to church and staying in the parking lot. They could never get into the building <laughs> because yeah. God, you know. So you worshipped, you know, um, it, 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 you know, in the in the parking lot, and so the priest came in. And all the priests could go into the next altar, which is the altar of incense. And they could burn there, okay? Okay. But then behind that was the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was. And only the high priest, and he only once a year, could go into the uh, Holy of Holies, and that's where he sprinkled the blood and everything. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the changing high priest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The changing high priest. But he, there was only one high priest. So out of the, it was it called the Aaronic Priesthood then? Yes, it okay. was. Right. The Aaronic Priesthood because of Aaron. Right. He then... Um, went the high priest was chosen by the Levitical priesthood. Oh, really chosen by God. Priest. Okay, really chosen by God. And then he went into the temple. And I know that in the past, um, what I've heard, and, and I'm sure you've heard this too, is that the priest had a tie the high priest with a rope to go into the veil, through the veil. So if he died, they, they weren't allowed, <laughs> yeah, right? They yeah. weren't allowed to get into the, the Holy of Holies. Right. So they would have to actually drab, drag him right. uh, with a rope. Right. So if he passed away. Yeah. So very interesting about that. So when we're looking at the Levitical priesthood, um, I wanted to talk also about something that people want need to think about, this Mechesdic priest who's in the Old Testament. Who is he and why did he come <laughs> forth and why was Abraham? Um, looking at this Mechesic priest uh, who came forth, why did he give tithes and why was he giving offerings to this Mechesic priest? Because wow. Abraham was pretty high up. Yeah, you asked a big question there. Now, yeah. Melchizedek only appeared one time in Genesis 14, at, at, like you said, with Abraham, right? And Abraham lived about 600 years before Moses, you know, 700 years. So, so we're, you know, we go back now 700 years before the Aaronic priesthood is even set up. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and Melchizedek priest, you know, he, he appears on the scene for about eight verses and then he's gone. And he's called the King of Salem and so forth. And basically, uh, he's a very mysterious figure in, yeah. in, in the Bible. He had no parents. He had, well, yeah. He had no genealogy. Genealogy. So, yeah. Um, and, and it says that Abraham gave him tithes and that showed, as the Bible says, that that showed that uh, Melchizedek priest was higher than the Aaronic priesthood because it says in Abraham's loins and his descendants were the Aaronic priest. Yeah. And so that's why he gave him tithes. The only other time he's mentioned in the Old Testament is Psalm 110, which is very important because that's a psalm about Jesus. Okay. And it says Jesus is in the order of the Melchizedek priesthood. Okay. And then in the New Testament explains the wonders of that. So what do you think that that is the maybe in your opinion what you might think who that individual was he a type of for christ oh sure i think the the new testament especially the book of hebrews says that he was a type of christ and that's why his importance is there because in the old testament god often taught with symbols and everything sure and, yeah. and here was a very dramatic symbol of you know jesus the great high priest okay great yeah. so then what we have in the old testament we have the levitical priest the aaronic priesthood being right. part of that the high priest still being under the aaronic priest yes right um but he was chose by god right right and then um that was mostly in the old testament then what right. happens in the new testament jesus came right? right jesus came the messiah came oh messiah came and it, did it change everything oh it changed everything completely okay um especially when jesus died remember when jesus died and and, and when he was jesus died there's a lot of things that happened when jesus died and one was that when he died the the veil in the temple was cut in two and suddenly god was in a very symbolic way saying what was happening is that now we have access to God. See, now we don't have to have the representative, the go-between, because Jesus has removed that wall of sin through yeah, his death. Exactly. You know, that sin that he was always saying in the Old Testament kept you away from God. Yeah. He removed that.
So no longer then were the Jews, who were the Aaronic priesthood, yeah. no longer were they in position anymore to to continue to give blood sacrifice to the high priest because he changed everything, right? Yeah, the one, the ultimate sacrifice was given. And, and, and see, uh, that's why in the book of Hebrews, again, it says the Levitical priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, was abolished. It was, it was no, abolished. It, it, so they lost their job in essence, it, right? They lost their job <laughs> because, okay. again, the, the total sacrifice was given. See, all those sacrifices before were just pointing to Jesus' complete sacrifice. Wow. And see, before I mention the priest do two things. And see, in the, old, in the New Testament, it says Jesus is our Melchizedek priest, and what did he do? He sacrificed for us. You know, instead of the altar in front of the temple, the altar on Golgotha, the cross. Right? Yes, yes. And he sacrificed himself for us, and he acted as our priest right there. Yeah. And, what, you know, what a wonderful priesthood that is. Now, how was he given that priesthood? What was, what was how did that all work out? The, the way that, because he received the Mechestic priest, right? Could, right, right. And again, the book of Hebrews is a wonderful book. In the if you want to understand the Old Testament, you go to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. And in the book of Hebrews, it says that just like you know, people in the the priests were chosen by God in the Old Testament. So what? So in the New Testament, God chose His Son Jesus to be the Melchizedek priest. Okay. See, that's why it's so. Uh, important to see that Jesus was a Messiah, the, the anointed, the appointed one <laughs> yeah. by God to be our priest, our Savior, who was sacrificed. Not just an animal. <laughs> Got he, it. he was a priest and he was also the sacrifice. Yeah. yeah, he did it all. Yeah, he was the last blood sacrifice that redeemed the sins for for all people. Right. So it was him and him alone. Now, we right. don't need to go back to the old ways, right? So that makes sense then if you're looking at the, the Aaronic priesthood, if they their position was only for blood sacrifice for for um, animals right. and giving it to the high priest. Now Jesus, who is the final sacrifice for all mankind, because right. as in Adam, we're, we're all made we're dead, and right. in Christ we're all made alive, and we're made alive because we put our faith and our belief in, in him, and now we are covered with his blood. Right. right? There's a wonderful passage in Hebrews redeemed. 10, 18, where it says, Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. See, once Jesus did it, I mean, even if I want to give an offering for sin, that category does not exist yeah. anymore. It, it ended. <laughs> yeah, it ended. It there, is no su there is no such category. Is that why and, he says it is finished? Too? Oh, yeah. Because it, it's done. It is done. And in, the, in the Greek, it. it's one word, tevelestai. And really what they did is they marked that um, um, bills paid in full. Paid in full. Yeah, paid in full. <laughs> Redeemed, purchased by his blood. Yep. Praise God. Yep. Exactly. Well, when we're looking now at uh, Jesus, when he is the Mechesdic priest, he was given yep. that right. Yeah. Um, now, there is some confusion in the Christian body, in the Christian church, um, in other churches who have priests. Right. They think that they need to continue to, to have these, these priests uh, being involved in the lives of many. Right. How does that really operate? How does that work now uh, when you're looking at the priesthood of God? Okay. And was Jesus, did Jesus uh, uh, bestow this priesthood in any way to, um, to his followers, his believers? Did he bestow it to the apostles? Okay. That's a good question. Right, that's a good question. I, I think there's two ways I want to talk about this. First of all, it says, you know, again, priesthood is all about access. And so the one priest we all have is Jesus because he never died. So we, you know, we don't have to replace him. Yeah. He's not changing. He's yeah. Done. <laughs> yeah. And that's why the, you know, the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man, yes. Christ Jesus. Right. That's true. So, so he's our only mediator, but then God in his infinite goodness to us, he says, okay, you're all believers, all believers. You're all priests. You don't have to be part of a family. You don't have to be male. You know, male, f female, young, old. Hold on. Now this might be really kind of <laughs> yeah. I better back that one. Surprising up. for some people who are listening to this. You're you're actually saying that in the Bible, after Jesus came and he was a final Melchizedek priest, that he bestowed to everyone who are believers yes. the opportunity to become priest. Right. And if if uh, we have a believer who is a woman, who can be a priestess. Right. At the same time. Because, the because, royal priesthood. Is that, right. is that correct? Right. In 1 Peter 2 9. And, and, Can you read that, please? Yeah. And first of all, it's really important to see that Peter is writing this to all the believers scattered throughout. So the letter is directed to believers. And there he says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a 
a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But especially that phrase, darkness and, and royal light. priesthood. And that's what is so... What is so amazing about that, in the Old Testament, the priests had to come from the family of Aaron, yep. tribe of Levi. Yep. The kings came from Judah. You could not have one person be a royal priest. Oh, okay. Because they were from two different families. Yeah. And so now, God says, you know, you're part of my family through faith. You're part of the royalty. But you're also a priest. That You don't have to go to somebody to have access to God. Okay. Every believer has direct access to to God. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. And what a wonderful blessing that is. So we're actually living temples then of God. We're, we're, so God is now in us. He dwells in us, right? Right. And, wow. and what, what's so interesting about that living temples, you bring that up, really the Greek word there was one used for the Holy of Holies. We're not just the whole temple, we're the Holy of Holies. Of yeah. Because the Holy of Holies yeah. uh, is, is where inside, God dwells in us. Yeah. Praise God. So then when we're looking at this, let me summarize it. Yeah. In conclusion, in the beginning then with the Old Testament was the Levitical priesthood that came from Aaron. Mm -hmm. And they were a very special group of people within the Levite tribe right. who were able to obtain the priesthood of God. They were male from the age of 25 to 30, yeah. right? 30 years old. And then what happened to them, their position was to give burnt offerings, to, to give blood, sacrificing... Yeah blood to the high priest right. high priest priest would sprinkle the blood on the altar and then after that after christ came their job was done god the father god gave his son appointed him and anointed him yeah. the mckessic priest right hood right and no longer is there a bestowal of this priesthood in the sense of mckessic we're not the mckessic priest no at all right we're not Aaronic priest anymore. No. So it's only the royal priesthood that we are under. He is the, the right. priest, the high priest right. over the whole house of the God. Right? right. And we are the royal priest, the priests and priestesses. Right. By our faith. By our faith. And the, wonder, and the wonderful thing about that is, is that we enter the priesthood not by our worthiness. Uh, I see. But completely by Jesus' worthiness. Yeah. You know, it's not what we do. It's what he did. And that's what is so wonderful about this. We don't wow. earn it. We are giving it. Great. Well, I hope you learned something today. That was a very valuable lesson. Um, certainly a, a lesson that I, I hope that you, as a, as a believer or people who are not believers or maybe are under um, priest in other churches, that you could look at this and, and understand the truth of it. Because certainly this is, this is what the Bible teaches us. And we're very grateful for having you, Mark, sharing it's this uh, wisdom and information to many people who are watching this right now. And I thank you. And, and I uh, hope and pray that your ministry continues to do well. You have a great ministry, Truth and Love Ministry. And he, he does a lot of great things in, in this area of uh, the, the Northwest area. So thank you again for stopping by and giving us this information about the priesthood. Thank you. You bet.